Welcome back guys to another episode of my Munchin Gladback career on FIFA 15 and seeing that we are in the thick of the winter break in the German league in January where no games are to be played and the transfer window is wide open I thought I would do a post commentary for this episode and before we get going with transfer deals because we are in the thick of January the transfer window is wide open Hagota wanted an improvement on his contract not so much his wages and I wanted to tie him down as well because the last month or so every time he's come off the bench he has been world class getting on that score sheet I think his average rating was 7.5 when I last looked at the uh, the squad report and he's still at the age of 22 so there is loads of room for improvement and if I keep giving him game time then he's just going to get better and he's making me think now whether I should actually be starting him as a first team whether I want to push him into that and, and select him over the top of Max Cruiser or maybe j just thinking about it maybe I, I should switch up the formation go for something like a 4-4-2 which will, will allow Max Cruiser to work alongside a Gota that could be a deadly combination for each opposition that we come up against. I will definitely look into that and test the waters and see how we do. See how those two perform alongside each other. Maybe we can get a deadly partnership with Cruiser and Hagota. Now, in the last episode where I left you guys off, I managed to sign Kashar on a pre-contract. He will be joining Mönchengladbach at the end of the season. I also went after, I think you pronounce his name, Juna Zovic. I went after him, tried to sign him up on a pre-contract as well because his contract is coming to an end and what a player he can be for Munch and Gladbach. You can see I'm going in. He was looking for 60 grand a week for three years. He would be set as an important first team player if he made that move. It's all about those negotiations. And then I saw this headline that Hanover had agreed to let Ron Robert Zeeler leave the club in January as well because he is a top keeper. He's at the age of 25, again, another player that's got loads of uh, room for improvement. And his potential isn't too bad. And it got me thinking, maybe I could offload Hessel at the end of the season. Bring in Zeeler and maybe have him as my backup keeper. Or he could become my first team uh, goalkeeper instead of Sommer. At the time, it, it really got me thinking, should I go after Zeeler at the age of 25? Decent goalkeeper. I did go and put in an offer and see what would happen. Now, as you can see, his value is 6.5 million. Hanover probably wouldn't want to let him go for any less than that. But I went ahead and offered 1 million plus Janschk, who is one of many centre-halves that I've got munching glad back. And Janschk, I think it was in the previous... Uh, here you go, you can see me stalling on the uh, Univzovic. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I, I stalled on that deal because I wanted to see what would happen with Janschk. And in the previous episode, as I was saying, he handed in his transfer request, so he wanted to go in January. I received an offer off Schalke for 4.8 million, but I went in with a counter and said, if you want him, you're going to have to pay just under 10 million, 9.5. And surprisingly, Hanover had actually accepted my transfer offer for Ron Robert Zeeler for 1 million plus Janschk. But Schalke had come in with an improved offer of Janschk and I was thinking to myself, you know, we might be able to get a bit more money out of Schalke here. We, we might be able to push them and I again went in with another counter offer and stood my ground, 9.5 million if you want him. Then it was back to the Zeeler situation, I really was unsure what to do. Maybe I should have took to Twitter and asked you guys what I should be doing. And by the way, if you're not following me on Twitter, the links can be found in the description below. I know, cheap plug. I went ahead anyway and offered him a contract worth 50 grand a week, three years, important first team player. And I've always got that option to either stall on the deal or simply say no. I did kind of want to stall as well because I wanted to see what Schalke said about the, the counter offer and they did come back and said that they were willing to, to match the, the counter offer of 9.5 million. So at this point I'm stuck in the mud. What do I do? Do I sign Zeeler and let Janch go the opposite way? Or well, Schalke had already accepted the deal, they were in contract talk so it was right now that I had to make a decision and I rejected Ron Robert Zeeler. Went ahead and accepted Zlatko Janazovic from Werder Bremen and once that deal will go through just like Kashar he will be joining in the summer and playing for us next season and that meant that Janschk would be going to Schalke 
Going in the opposite direction than Santana because as you remember in the summer I signed Santana from Schalke and now they want one of my centre-halves to try and fill in that gap and they've gone after Janschk and have got their man. So Janschk has left, Mönchengladbach has joined Schalke for 9.5 million but the board has only allocated 8 million of that to add to my transfer kitty. Now one of the players I have been looking at because I know I need to strengthen my full-back position especially left-back and I think I've found the perfect player to fit into that left-back position, to work with Dominguez, to try and compete with each other for a first-team spot in Jetro Willems from PSV. Quite a few of you guys suggested that I go after him, and I thank you guys for leaving those suggestions in the comments below. In previous videos, Willems' value, 12 million. I thought maybe we could get him for less, so I put in an offer of 7.5. I think that's fair enough. We've got 8 million just over to spend. So I was feeling confident that we could sign Willems to a contract at Munch and Gladbach. You can see in the headlines as well. Quite a few other deals have been put together. Nothing huge to note really apart from Aguero being linked with Bayern Munich. But take a look at this. After talks have broken down between Zeeler and Munch and Gladbach, Arsenal came in straight away. They've pounced on it and they've completed that quick fire move for Zeeler. He has joined. Arsenal he is returning back to the English Premier League PSV came back to me and said it was just not acceptable the offer of 7.5 mil they put a price tag on Willems's head of 9 million I didn't have that so I stuck with 7.5 for the time being as I tried to search for another player that I could potentially put in the uh, the whole deal itself maybe offload someone else that we may not be using throughout this career mode I thought Thorburn Marks and then Fabian Johnson, who, you know, I don't feel as though I've got to know the player. I've, I haven't used him at all. We've got Angel Rangel, and I mainly play Corb as my first team right back anyway. So I put in an offer of 8 mil in the end instead of 7.5, as well as Johnson. No reason for PSV to be turning that deal down. There was just a, a couple of days left of the transfer window of the winter break before we uh, we kicked off this season again against Stuttgart and PSV had accepted that 8 million bid and Johnson and all I had to do was offer Willems a contract and he would be part of the team if he accepted that is and you guys will be able to find out a bit later in this episode and just quickly I want to thank you all once again for your fantastic suggestions that you left in the comment section below on previous videos I I wanted to sign every single one of them but the thing is as you know I didn't have much of a transfer kitty to spend in January hopefully in the summer we'll be able to put together some big big deals and I suppose that all depends on whether I'm given a good budget or not and again I want to put that question to you guys should I use the financial takeover in the summer for next season maybe we can bring in some world-class players be sure to let me know once again in the comment section below of this episode now we're back from our winter break we had to play Stuttgart I knew we were in for a tough game here playing away the ground as well that the fans seem so far away from the pitch Stuttgart though they took they took a good lead 34 minutes gone and it was a, a cracking goal it really was I I had to watch the replay over and over and I'm going to show you guys the replay. Picked out that, that far post nicely with the cross over the top of our defence and hit that on the volley. You know, I, I did kind of expect better from Sommer. I mean, it was right next to his head. He went to save it, but he just couldn't get a fingertip to it. And so Munch and Gladbach found themselves trailing by a goal to nil. Into the second half, we uh, we mounted an attack here with Angel Rangel going all central on us, pushing forwards, trying to create something, try and get an attack going because we were just falling flat on our face every time we, we started getting into that final third and we, we just needed to dig deep and we couldn't find it. And it's just deflating and it was a shame that we had to go and then concede a second goal in the 87th minute. You know, we were in good form before the winter break and as soon as we return back, the first game back from that winter break we go ahead and lose it dropping all three points and probably dropping all momentum that we have built up before we're still in a good position though we're still in fourth in that European spot but we are three points behind Schalke now and then there's Wolfsburg hot on our tails just two points behind us so we we really need to be winning our next Bundesliga game it was transfer deadline day 10 hours to go 
and I had the news that Jetro Willems had accepted my contract offer, but I was a bit intrigued by this as well. Everton were going in for a bid. Do you remember when I signed Willems when I was doing my Everton career on FIFA 13? I just thought it was funny to see Everton going in for him again. But yes, I did manage to come to terms with Jetro Willems. He has now signed for Borussia Mönchengladbach, the 20-year-old hot prospect. He's going to be amazing in that left-back position. And here is an overview of all of the deals that were put together for Munch and Gladbach over January. You can see that I've spent 8 million. That was all on Jetro Willems because I managed to sign Kishar and Yanazovic on a pre contract. So they will be joining the team for next season. And Johnson, Stranzel, and Yanchk went the opposite way. They went out of the club in January. Also in January, Wolfsburg was splashing the cash. They managed to sign. Jackson Martinez. What a deal that is. The race for that European spot for next season certainly hotting up. And Martinez, he's he's a brilliant talent. He's going to be their talisman now all the way to the end of the season. And take a look at this as well. Bayern Munich have strengthened their team even further now, bringing in Manchester City's Sergio Aguero for the sum of 57.5 million. We can watch out when we uh, when we have to play them again in the Bundesliga. So that was it for the transfer window. Not much was happening, not many players available, and I didn't really have much of a transfer kitty, as you guys know, but 149 million in total was spent. It's incredible, that. And to finish things off for this episode, the draw for the quarterfinals of the Ducha Pokal has been made. Borussia Mönchengladbach will play away against Bochum, and that's going to take place on the 4th of Feb. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode then. Hope you've all enjoyed, and I will see you all very soon for the next one. Thanks for watching.